Jai Hind students, today we are going towards the modulation part. As I already told you in the previous lecture, in this unit of telemetry principles, we are actually discussing about multiplex systems and a multiplex system is basically combining two technology, first one is multiplexing and second one is modulation. In the previous lecture, we understand about the various mod, uh, multiplexing techniques that are time division multiplexing techniques and frequency division multiplexing technique. Today, we are going to concentrate on the specifically FM circuits, because in your syllabus, FM, FDM is a major multiplex system which is used by telemetry systems. So, starting with the FM circuits, first of all I told you about the frequency modulation. You already studied this part in your previous semester syllabus in communication engineering, but uh, before starting that I want to give a crisp view about frequency modulation. What is frequency modulation? Basically, whenever we want to send any signal to the distant place, it is required that that signal will be strengthened in such a way, so that it can travel to long distance. That is why we are going to use modulation, this is the main need of the modulation as discussed in the previous lecture. And as per the types of modulation, we have three types of modulation, amplitude modulation, phase modulation and frequency modulation. And as per the definition, when we are modulating the frequency of the carrier as per the instantaneous value of the message signal, it will become frequency modulation. So, you can easily see in this diagram, this first one is the message signal and this message signal is basically a sinusoidal signal. A carrier signal of high frequency is going to be used to modulate this signal. When we are applying frequency modulation concept, you can easily see that only the frequency of the carrier signal is going to be changed as per the instantaneous value of the message signal. If our message signal is empty and the carrier signal is a cos omega c t, then the resultant frequency modulated waveform is f t is equal to a cos omega c t plus k f integration x t uh, m f d t, where m f is the modulation index of f m, omega c is the frequency angular frequency of the carrier, a is the amplitude of the carrier. So, you can easily see that here a is same as the carrier signal, but the frequency is going to be changed as the integral part of the message signal. Similarly, we can understand the frequency modulation some key points. In frequency modulation, there is also availability of side bands and the F m wave is comprised of an infinite number of side band component bandwidth of a F m signal and that must be wider than that of an A m signal. It means, when you are talking about the A m signal, you have only two side bands that are upper side band and lower side band, but in the F m you have n side bands present and the, and the amplitude of n side bands are decided as per the Bessel function values. So, when we are talking about the frequency modulation, you understand one thing that as well as you are going to increase the Bessel function, the bandwidth of the frequency modulated signal is also going to be increased. So, as the modulation index increases from m f is equal to 0, the spectral energy shift from the carrier to the an increasing number of significant side bands. So, 
higher the modulation index, the greater the required system bandwidth. I, I already told you because that is directly related with the Bessel function. Then we are talking about the phase modulation as we discuss the basic equation of Fm and Pm as Fm basic equation is st is equal to a cos omega ct plus kf integration xt dt. But when we are talking about the phase modulation, the same equation is st is equal to a cos omega ct plus x uh, omega ct x t k p. In the both the both equation you can easily understand one point. In frequency modulation you are taking the integration of x t means you are taking the integral value of the message signal. But in the phase modulation you are directly taking the message signal and you are not taking here the integral part of the message signal. It means the f m and frequency modulation both are related to each other in this way and that k p and k f are the phase sensitivity and frequency sensitivity for the system, where m p and m f are the modulation index of phase modulation and the frequency modulation. So, as per this diagram you can see that the same carrier is going to be used for this modulating signal and you are getting the resultant phase modulated modulating modulated signal in such a way only the phase of the say carrier is going to be changed as per the message signal. Whether the amplitude and the frequency is going to be same. So, this is the relation between f m and p m modulation. So, now actually when we are using the modulators to perform this frequency modulation we are going to use this f m circuits. So, when we are talking about f m modulation there are many techniques, many circuits, many technology are present for the frequency modulation, but they all are broadly classified into two parts and that parts are direct modulation and second one is indirect modulation. Now, understand this point direct modulation and indirect modulation. When you are taking the message signal and applying it to a such type of uh, uh, oscillator circuit or a specific circuit which is directly going to convert that message signu, signal into the varying frequency signal that is called direct modulation. But when you are using the relationship between f m and p m and a phase modulator circuit with a integrator is using for the generation of f m circuit that is called indirect modulation. Means in the direct modulation message signal is coming in a block that block is producing the f m signal directly. But when we are talking about the indirect method message signal is coming or from the other side you are getting the carrier signal both signal are going to apply to a particular block of phase modulator and in the phase modulator circuit you are going to use a integrator circuit and that integrator circuit is providing the integral part of the message signal and that is why you are getting a f m signal at the output. So, for the f m circuit there are two types of circuit direct circuit or phase modulated circuit means indirect circuit. Now, in frequency modulator the circuit basically varies carrier frequency in accordance with the modulating signal and the carrier is actually in this complete diagram or in this complete technology are generated by the LC or crystal oscillator circuits. Now, we are going to describe all one by one. So, first of all what are the key factors of f m circuit? In f m circuit we are using LC oscillator to generate the carrier frequency and 
that carrier frequency is directly generated by change in inductance or capacitance of the circuit. Also, the basic idea behind this is to find a circuit or component that convert a modulating signal to a corresponding change in capacitance or inductance. But when we are using LC oscillator, there is a problem of stability. So, many times crystal oscillator is going to be used to get a fixed frequency by the system. Now, as we are using variable inductance or capacitance value, we required some kind of specific devices which reactance or capacitance can be changed. So, in this series, the very first device is Varector. Basically, Varector diode is a variable capacitance diode which is used to change the oscillator frequency, as you can see in this diagram. Because when we are talking about the direct method of FM generation, we use basically variable reactance circuits and Varector diode is the very first kind of component or device which is going to be used for this purpose. In that, you can see that a junction diode is created when P and N type of semiconductors are formed during the manufacturing process and the depletion region where there are no free carriers, holes or electron is formed in the process. That is why this region act like a thin insulator that prevent current flow from, uh, from flowing through the device. It means, it means this vector diode will act like a normal diode in the forward bias, but when it is connected in reverse bias, then it will prevent the current flow and act like a variable capacitor. So, you can see that a reverse bio diode like, uh, act like a small capacitor and the P and N type material act as the two plates of the capacitor. Depletion region act as the dielectric material and the width of the depletion layer determines the width of the dielectric and therefore, the amount of capacitance. Now, to understand this more, I, go, I am going to explain this in such a way that always when you are talking about a oscillator circuit, in a oscillator circuit there are basically two blocks. One block is the amplifier circuit and another block is the feedback circuit. That amplifier circuit is basically made of amplifier basic circuits such as common emitter configuration or something else and that feedback circuit is basically going to be made by using variable inductance or variable capacitance values. Because the frequency of oscillation of this circuit is directly given by the 1 upon 2 pi L c and if the L or c value is going to be changed, then the overall frequency cutoff frequency is also going to be changed. It means, if you are going to change the tank circuit inductance or capacitance, it will directly change the output frequency. So, in this frequency modulation or frequency modulator circuits, we are actually using these type of varector diode. These varector diode are specially designed diode which are going to be used in reverse bias, so that it can work like a variable capacitor. So, by this diagram you can easily understand the direct FM modulator using varector diode. In this diagram you can see that this part is amplifier part. You can see there 
here is a transistor this is the complete arrangement of a amplifier circuit here we are using a tank circuit the tank circuit is actually getting the message signal from here you are getting a audio signal from this microphone that is going towards the audio amplifier and that audio amplifier giving the radio frequency uh, tuned frequency coil and that coil is basically tuning coils and that is providing the message signal audio message signal to this vector diode which is connected in the reverse bias you can see that positive part is connected to the ground so when this message signal is applied here the changing voltage is going to come into the picture as the change in frequency as, as the change in the capacitance and due to the change in the capacitance of this vector diode the overall capacitance of this tank circuit is going to be changed that will give a output circuit of varying frequency this is the direct fm modulator using vector diode similarly when we are talking about more the disadvantage of about this circuit here we are using a lc oscillator circuit and basically these lc oscillator are not stable enough and the frequency of the lc oscillator also will vary with temperature changes variation circuit voltage and other factor so as a result crystal oscillator are normally used for in in uh, fm uh, circuits to set the carrier frequencies so in the next diagram you can see that direct fm modulator using crystal oscillator and vvc basically vvc stand for the variable uh, voltage variable capacitance so same that voltage voltage variable capacitance is coming from this device that is vector diode this is the vector diode connected in the reverse bias the same crystal oscillator is applied here to provide the basic frequency here we have a amplifier circuit combinedly it is giving a fm output of varying frequency as per the message signal applied at this vector diode then the reactance modulator in the reactance modulator in the previous one we are talking about the uh basically capacitance variation but in this particular part we are going to change the reactance value so in this circuit you can see that a carrier oscillator is placed here this is generating the carrier frequency here is a tuned circuit which is going to set the carrier frequency as per the requirement modulating signal is coming from here and this is a amplifier circuit and combinedly we are going to get the v output from this place yani we are getting the frequency modulated signal from here in this in in this particular diagram also we are changing the modulating signal frequency and that frequency is going to be used to change this tuned circuit to set the output frequency so you can see that in all these techniques and you can easily understand one point here very clearly that you are going to use variable reactance or variable capacitance devices to generate the fm signal so always remember one thing in the direct method you are taking the message signal that message signal is going to apply to a variable vector or variable reactance device and that variable vector or variable reactance device is going to convert the uh, or going to uh, convert the change in voltage of uh, 
uh, incoming message signal into the change in frequency. You can easily understand by this reactance modulator circuit. Here this is the modulating signal, you are getting the RFC signal here, this is the basically radio frequency coil, then R1, R2, RS, CS and this transistor and the transistor is basically utilized for the purpose of common emitter configuration. That common emitter configuration is actually used for the amplification purpose. So, as I told you, we have two types of technique of modulation that is direct and indirect. In direct modulation technique, we are taking the message signal applying it to a variable reactance device that may be a vector diode, that may be a tank circuit of the amplifier. In this particular diagram or in this particular technologies, we are using crystal oscillator, crystal oscillator so that more stability can be achieved. Then this the variable reactance device is going to change the output frequency that is governed by this formula cutoff frequency. If any change in L part or C part, it will overall change the output frequency. So, you are giving actually the message signal and getting the variable frequency signal and that variable frequency is also in range of high frequency. So, this is the direct method. In indirect method, commonly we have Armstrong method, Armstrong method. That method is not used widely in telemetry principles or in telemetry systems, that is why that is not covered in this syllabus. But I am also want to give you some introduction about the Armstrong method. In Armstrong method, you are generating the FM signal using phase modulator. In the direct method, you are directly taking the message signal and getting the FM signal, but in the indirect method, you are generating the frequency modulated signal using a phase modulator. That is why it is called indirect method. In Armstrong method, the same crystal oscillators are used to provide carrier frequency and as I told you, in the relation of the FM and PM, you understand one point, in phase modulator circuits, you are generating the, di, the, the uh, generating the phase modulated signal directly as per the instantaneous value of the message signal. But in the frequency modulation, you are taking the integral part of the message signal and that integral part is actually getting from a integrator circuit. Means, first of all, you are providing the message signal to a integrator and that integrator is giving us this integration integrated value of x t d t and that integrated value is going to apply on a phase modulator circuit. And as we know that f m signals are of two type narrow band or wide band, generally through the Armstrong method initially we are generating the narrow band signals and by using various frequency multiplier, we can convert that narrow band f m signal into the wide band f m signals. So, this is all about the f m circuits that are used for the 
telemetry systems. In the next lecture, we are going to concentrate on various FM demodulator circuits. Till then, thank you.